Hello and welcome. I am Garima and joining me on the dais today is Katie Mehnet, founder and CEO Pink Petro. Popularly recognized as a people engineer, Katie is an active advocate of diversity and inclusion in the energy sector, bringing about significant cultural change. Thank you so much Katie for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Katie, I'm particularly intrigued about the why that everyone has before joining uh, the energy sector. What has been your motivation behind uh, coming to this industry? Well, I think the energy industry is one of the most fascinating places to work. We underpin all of economic, all of all of the you know the economy. We we power the world. Um, I think it was once said that uh, energy is the currency of life. So for me, there's nothing more exciting than getting up every day knowing that we're bringing energy to so many people in the world that need it to drive prosperity in their lives. Right, that's uh, definitely uh, true. And Katie, what has been the inspiration behind Pink Petro? Now everyone is aware of uh, what Pink Petro is doing in this space, and it's really wonderful what you guys are doing. What is uh, Pink Petro all about and how are you uh, planning to take this forward? Well, so Pink Petro started actually as an idea on a triple seven between London and Houston. Mm -hmm. I was sitting next to a gentleman who wanted to have a conversation about career, wanted to have a conversation about um, why I wasn't at home with my daughter, all kinds of conversations. And so as we had that conversation, it occurred to me that this industry needs really two things. It needs more women and diversity in it, and we need to tell our story better. And so when he asked me, what's a pretty young lady like you doing in a dark, dangerous business like oil and gas, I knew pretty quickly that what I wanted to do was leave and help address these two challenges. And so for the last five years, we've been doing that. We launched in 2015 amidst a uh, massive oil crash, a uh, massive price uh, crash, which seems uh, actually uh, not that bad com comparatively speaking, given the last few weeks uh, in the oil markets. Right. And the goal was to leverage digital technology to drive inclusion and to drive a different story and a different narrative around what we do. It is so important that people understand how energy plays a role in their everyday lives it's important that the industry develop it in a responsible way, but I also believe that it's time for women and underserved groups to be a part of driving that future. And so that's what Pink Petro is about. It's about that conversation. It's about elevating the talent that's doing the work. It's also about helping companies find people who want to be a part of this uh, great industry. And it's also about attracting new talent into the industry. We're, we're in the past, we've done uh, a really terrible job, I think, at trying to attract new people. We're very good at looking within ourselves. And I think we need to look outside of the industry and start looking at the people who make up society and get them engaged in the great work we do. Right, right, Katie. Katie, I would also like to know a bit about your uh, professional uh, background before Pink Petro. And uh, what I have gathered is that you've worked with BP and Shell as well. How has that journey been for you? Yeah, so I spent a number of years at two major operators. Uh, to, uh, in fairness, I jokingly call myself a people engineer because I'm not an actual engineer by background, but I've had folks convinced for years that I have been one. I'm just a very naturally inquisitive person. I like to ask good questions and I like to understand and get, um, get deep about uh, uh, technical issues. But I started my career in, actually my background is in communications. And so I have a journalism degree. And uh, I remember when I got out of university, I thought, how can you report on something that you have no depth in? So I got into the energy industry because I was fascinated by it. There are so many moving parts. It's vast, it's huge. And so after a number of years inside of two oil majors, at one point I met a woman, a woman engineer who asked me what I wanted to be when I grew up. And I said, I'm not really sure what's possible in this industry. Because if you weren't an engineer, you know, there wasn't it seemingly a, a straight path. And so she actually asked me to lead a part of her organization in safety. 
and safety wouldn't have been one of my immediate choices, but safety is actually all about great communication, great engagement. It's about human factors. It's, uh, it's about change management. Uh, it's not technical. It's actually all humans. So I found my stride working in health and safety for a number of years at Shell. And then I went to BP after the Macondo incident in the Gulf of Mexico to work with uh, its organization on how to shift culture. And so I was fascinated by the safety work because safety gets back to how we think about work. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, when we create an inclusive work environment, our safety results are better just like our financial results are better. So with time, I realized that actually inclusion was a key to having um, successful outcomes around health and safety and reliability. And so that's why I think, you know, when I look back on my career, one of the things that I love the most about working in health and safety is because it's all about people. And as you know, diversity and inclusion is about people as well. So it was a nice fit, uh, I think, I don't know that if you'd asked me 10 years ago what I have started something called Pink Petro and left, you know, my chair, I was pretty comfortable. It was a great, a great career. I loved, uh, obviously I loved uh, every aspect of it. I flew the world. I got to meet all kinds of different people and of different backgrounds. Um, but that's where I, that's where I got my start. And actually prior to, to uh, working for Shell and BP, I had worked a couple of uh, consulting assignments uh, at Enron and in um, the power and utilities industry. So it's been a really neat uh, uh, part of my career to be able to see kind of oil and gas, you know, power and utilities, upstream, downstream, midstream. Uh, the only part of the, the sector I haven't touched is the alternative part of the, the alternative energies part of the sector. That's an exciting sector as it's as it's growing. And I'm sure that's not too far because you have been telling the stories from uh, the different aspects of the industry and we will be as the climb as the industry is transitioning towards uh, new energy forms there will be a lot of stories that need to be uh, told and I'm sure uh, you will be doing that too as well and no. yes, absolutely Katie what is the story of experience energy the organization you founded later on? So Experience Energy is just an extension of, of Pink Petro. The, the goal was not just to create a digital community where we could tell stories and raise the profile of great people in the industry and their work, but then to create a careers platform very geared at uh, um, you know, at, a, at meeting the needs of, of that um, of that audience, and so we launched Experience Energy in 2017 with the goal of uh, creating a destination career site for women in energy, for those interested in energy, um, and the the whole um, premise behind Experience Energy is for us to create those experiences, those stories, tell more stories about. Um, energy and you'll notice too it's you know obviously there are certain uh, things that people think you know when they think of the words pink petro right they think you know pink women petro oil right. um, one of the things that we've tried to do I think as we've grown is I have a huge um, like many people I have a huge passion for uh, the energy transition um, I know we are, we're in one and to be in the energy transition, we need a solid industry value proposition. We need um, great talent. And so Experience Energy is about helping to attract that talent, helping to um, uh, tell the stories of, uh, of, of those jobs and those possibilities. You know, when I think back to that question, you know, my, um, my mentor asked me many years ago, what do you want to be when you grow up? I didn't know what was possible. Experience Energy is about exposing what's possible. Right, right. That's wonderful. That's a, that's definitely a wonderful initiative, Katie. And uh, your book, uh, Grow With The Flow, just uh, recently has been launched. Uh, tell us about, tell us about it. You know, so it was on my bucket list. I wanted to write a book. This was a goal and a dream for 20 years. It took literally two decades to finish. Mm -hmm. um, really, I think when I reflect back on 
writing the book, it was more or less, I thought, you know, if, if I had a collection of stories or if I had a collection of advice, you know, what might I leave behind? And I have a daughter. And so, you know, thinking, Hey, I'm, I'm going to write a book and it'd be nice to, you know, leave, leave behind something, uh, leave a legacy, so to speak. So it wasn't until though, um, a couple of years ago, actually not too uh, far off from when we launched Experience Energy in 2017, Hurricane Harvey uh, devastated Houston um, and uh, devastated my, my home and devastated my business. And so there wasn't, um, I wasn't really, the book kind of sat for a little bit and it wasn't until Hurricane Harvey uh, happened that I realized that I needed to finish the book, you know, kind of finish what I started. So Row With The Flow is about, um, it's kind of, it's, it's, there's two elements to it. It's a story about uh, resilience. It's a story about, you know, no matter what happens, right? Um, sometimes life goes on ahead and gets us ready, you know, for uh, things that we may not think that we're, you know, ready for, whether it's, you know, a, a layoff or, you know, getting fired or, um, you know, health issues. And so I talk a lot about um, the stories of my career and my life in the book. And um, it starts out obviously, um, with uh, with uh, Hurricane Harvey and, and kind of paints the backdrop around Hurricane Harvey. But I actually chose the words grow with the flow because, you know, the flow represented the water, you know, the, the rush of water that kind of came into my life and, and changed it forever. There was never a time, I think, you know, despite, you know, um, having cancer, you know, um, not being able to have children, you know, struggling with, you know, having a, um, a child, uh, layoffs, getting fired. I don't know that there was anything ever more profound in my life than the experience of Hurricane Harvey. And it happened right as Pink Petro was taking off. So uh, I had to make a choice. Um, I could stop and not continue the work. Um, and not because it was falling apart, but literally because it was so overwhelming to have to deal with the, you know, the, the pressure of, of having to rebuild your life or I could move forward, right? And so through um, a lot of just counsel and advice of great people that I admire, I realized I needed to keep going. And so not just keep going, but keep growing. So um, the book is, is an element of, of resilience. And the other side to it is my vision of what I think the world needs in energy. And I talk about it and I basically say we need more um, people rooted in the feminine. And that doesn't mean that we need just more women. It means we need different ideas about our planet. We need our different ideas about sustainability. You know, we didn't get to where we are today because we had a diverse workforce or we had, you know, a diverse viewpoint around our energy system. Our energy system needs radical transformation. And in order to meet that need, we're going to need different voices, different faces, different ideas around the table. So there's a element of planet and, and uh, climate in this book. And then obviously um, an element of you know, personal resilience. And so it was really great to finish the book. And then the funny thing is, <laughs> as we're finishing the book, we're getting it all printed. The publisher says, you know, it's going to release in, in uh, April, early May. And uh, as the pandemic was unfolding, yes, I called my, my, you know, I called the team and I said, maybe we should hold the presses and I should write a, a chapter on the pandemic. And they said, no, 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 that's, that's book number two. So releasing a book in the middle of a pandemic has been a huge experience, uh, lear in, you know, learning experience for me. But I think that the messages in here are actually very relevant for what's happening right, right now. Right. They couldn't have been a better time for it if you look at it that way. And uh, the book is definitely on my list. I have to read it uh, soon enough. And uh, Katie, you have been talking about cultural change and you have been leading that cultural change in the industry. Post COVID-19, what do you think and what kind of change uh, I, are we looking at as an industry? Well, I, you know, in some ways, uh, I think COVID has been a silver lining for us. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen 
Uh, the last three months have been very tough on the industry. Right. We've seen a price crash, we've seen geopolitical tensions, we've seen lowering demand. I don't think that we will be the same. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a lot of folks think that maybe, you know, when um, demand picks up, you know, we'll start using, you know, planes and doing all the things that we were doing pre-COVID. I actually think that the world is, um, is shifting. I think that often in times like these in profound transformational times when everyone is reflecting, you know, on their part, that it's a, it's an opportunity for us to say, okay, how are we going to go, um, uh, forward in, in a different way? Uh, and I think this marks a unique time for the industry. I don't think that the industry is going to turn its back on um, climate goals and targets. I don't think, you know, the industry is uh, is going back to the old way of working. I think if anything, we're going to be embracing the new. But embracing the new is about pain. You know, you don't you don't see cultural change until there's motivation to, and if you look at COVID, I mean, this is a great example of how our world is, we're all going through some sort of, of, of change and we're trying to adapt to this new normal. So I'm excited about the future. I think that the future is if, in energy is gonna be especially um, exciting because it's a chance for us to do things uh, differently. It's a chance for us to think about um, energy in a different way. It's a chance to tap mm -hmm. uh, new talent and new ideas. Um, and it's a chance to tell the story of energy as it should be. Um, so I'm, I'm optimistic, you know, back in the 1300s and there, there are countless um, uh, historical accounts all over the world, but in the 1300s, you know, half of Europe was wiped out by the bubonic plague. And what came after it was a flourishing of society. You know, and so I, I feel like we're kind of in a modern day, you know, situation like that. I think that on the other side of this, uh, there's going to be some exci this exciting times and I'm looking forward to the technology and the innovation and the new ideas that, uh, that the COVID situation is going to create as a result for the energy industry. Yes, yes, right. And uh, Katie, you have been through a lot as an entrepreneur. And if you had to give some advice, some suggestions to the people struggling right now, especially the startup community, what would your message be for them? Because some of the startups we have been in touch with in India here, they were just about to pick up. And then this uh, pandemic dramatically changed everything for them. And they're having a pretty tough time as of now, what would be your message to them going by your well, experiences? Yeah, so my message to the startup community or really anyone is is, uh, is that, that the pivot is key. And, you know, we didn't become startups or entrepreneurs because we weren't creative or scrappy. You know, when you come from that place of uh, seeing the gaps, and in my book I talk about this, you know, the need to really understand um, what gaps exist and then go in and filling them. You know, the COVID situation is creating a new opportunity for gaps. It's exposing gaps everywhere, right? In our energy system, in our healthcare system, um, in the way we live and work. And so I tell people all the time, now is a tremendous time to be rethinking your strategy. Is it solid enough? What is your pivot going to be? Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, and go forth. Uh, you know, I, not too long ago, someone asked me, and are you worried about, you know, this economic situation with COVID? And I said to myself, you know, I have been through more bumps and bruises in this journey. And by God, if it means I, you know, we, we're going to keep plowing through and we're going to get to the other side and we will hopefully write address what our pivot is. But even if we don't, right? Even if the, the company comes to its knees, I'm gonna be there until the last light is on, right? I'm gonna be there fighting for, um, you know, for, for my ideas and for, you know, the business. And so I would tell others, you know, now's the time to triple down, right? Now's not the time to hem and haw and worry. Now's the time to say, okay, what do I need to do to pivot, to move forward and just do it? Right, right. That's a very, very powerful message and uh, I'm sure people need to hear that because things have not been easy for most of us and 
but yes in the end we have to get through and as you said uh let's be the last light on till it all gets over so that's right yes and uh, katie what is your message for the younger generation they are very apprehensive about entering the industry at this point of time uh what is your uh, message for them my message for anyone who's uh you know i have to say that the class of 2020 was a bit robbed uh for sure i was we were walking yesterday's mother's day in the us and um I was walking the beach and i saw some uh graduates taking pictures on on the beach and i thought you know how sad i felt you know for these folks who worked so hard and they're not going to be able to walk physically because of the the covid virus so i came out in in a time when actually jobs were supposed to be great and they weren't you know the economy was was turning and so I, I would tell them to be very flexible and to be very creative. Um you know, we all have an assumption of what life and work is supposed to be and then there's the reality of it. And so I think that the the best thing that I would, you know, the best advice I would impart to um younger people is is that we need you. We're going to need energy. Energy is is going to fundamentally change in the next 20 to 30 years. and it's a great place to work. And I I saw the need many years ago. I said we are uh trimming our workforces bit by bit. The demographic forces at nature were pushing more experienced people out the door. The Gen X, you know, my generation um is very small and a small contingent. And the younger generation we've not yet tapped fully into and we haven't built a solid pipeline of talent. So I think we're going to be short. I know we're going to be short on talent and people. Uh it may not look like we're going to be short right now because the jobs are not um in uh in in large supply, but there will be a tipping point in the energy industry. And we were reaching some of those tipping points particularly around climate and um we had um record demand, you know, uh pre-covid. And so I think that the things uh in the industry are going to change, but I think they're exciting things. So I would tell people to be flexible, get into this business uh no matter what, you know, you've got to do, take a job so you can get some great experience. Um but but don't shut the door on energy. Uh at the end of the day, like I said, energy is the currency of life. it is what drives our economy forward it is what's allowing us to have this conversation and i think there's a lot of great potential there that's very true so let's just continue to keep looking at the brightest side and something definitely great will come out of it right and kati you are truly a voice for the women in energy and i really want to know what do you think about uh, do you think that women are well represented in the industry and what more needs to be done from both ends be it from the women perspective and also from the industry perspective to have a more inclusive workplace where women are well represented well first of all i think we need to socialize the opportunities i know that uh, a lot of a lot of the challenges is not knowing what's possible And of course that's happening also at a time when the industry is changing, right? And so we have a lot of shift going on. I really think though that um our representation uh, speaks for itself. It's it's not very good and we don't seem to, you know, every year there's a new s- study or statistic that comes out and while I think it's great to study things, I'm also kind of of the belief it's time to get on with it, right? We need to address it and, you know, um and give uh give uh give the opportunities we need to be able to you know move forward from a diversity perspective but i think that i think that what needs to happen is and particularly now the strong evidence to you know to tell the industry now is not the time to back down on diversity right. now is not the time to turn about your you know your back to these commitments um if anything i would say it's it's time to harness the power right of diversity particularly as we move through uh the covid-19 situation. So um you know I I don't think representation is is good. I don't think it's going to be the uh, be good for until until we see an equal workforce and that's going to take some time. But I think you know 
we need to make sure that we're socializing the opportunities, giving women in the business the opportunities to grow and to to uh, um, to manage up. And then obviously, I think that the industry needs not to turn its back on this um, as a goal. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Mm -hmm. um, we're not going to fix these challenges overnight. Right. However, the opportunity that diversity plays as a role in shaping the future of work and shaping the workforce and the way the energy industry moves forward is tremendous. Mm -hmm. so. Yes, definitely. And uh, Katie, there's just one last question and I'm particularly interested in this one. How do you manage everything? You are, are a mom, a wife, a homemaker, founder, CEO, entrepreneur, and also a marathon runner as, as far as I know. How do you manage everything? So I haven't run a whole lot in the last few months, in fairness. You know, I, the, the answer to that is, I'm just like everybody else, I'm a hot mess. Mm -hmm. This is not, it's not easy. It's, it takes a lot of balance. Uh, you can't be at all, you have to, to pick, right? You have to pick what you want um, your focus to be. And, um, and it's okay to also be some of those things in parts of your life and parts of your career and life, you know, other things. And so I think for me, the thing that I've learned is that life's too short. Um, life's, you know, we don't know when, you know, our time is to come. And I live life like uh, it's my last day, right? So what do I want to accomplish? What do I want to, you know, what are my goals? And then go after them. And, you know, um, I look back, it's 44 years this year, actually 45 in <laughs> December. So um, a lot that I've done in the 45 years that, you know, I've been here. Um, but I, I tell people it, it, it's a balance. It's you, you've got to choose what you want when you want. You can't have it all at once. Um, and, uh, but you can accomplish a lot in, you know, a great amount of time, but it's, it depends on what you focus on. And it also, it takes a mindset that, you know, um, that we're not here right. forever and time is, is limited. And so what do we want to do in that time and make the most of our time? And so, I'm just one of those people that throws my myself into to living. I absolutely love um, getting up every day knowing that I'm making a difference in the world and I encourage other people to find that balance and make that difference as well. Right. So. That's a great point Katie because uh, there should be, there must be a reason in all our lives that you know there must be reason to get out from the bed and do something that this is why I want to get up today and make make an impact there. So yes, that's that's quite an eventful journey if I talk about you. And uh, thank you so much, Katie, for joining us today. And I would really like to congratulate you for Pink Petro and also for Experience Energy. You are doing an incredible job. You're making an impact. You're out there and representing not just women in energy, but also the industry as a whole. And I'm really glad my organization is really happy for you and for Pink Petro. And we wish you all luck for your future endeavors. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for having me and for what you do to get this great stories out there. It takes all of us working together to create the energy narrative. So I appreciate all the great work that you do as well. Learning from you, learning from you. I've been learning from you from quite some gotcha. time. Gotcha. <laughs> thank you so much, Katie. Thank you so thank much. You. Okay. Take care. All right. Bye-bye.